Hi everyone, we're gonna be covering non-fungible tokens in this video, or what are more commonly referred to as NFTs. So I'm gonna help explain what they are and how they work. And then in another video, we're gonna go into more detail about how exactly you can use the settlement platform to quickly and easily have an environment in which you can create and interact with NFTs for your own business. But so you may have heard about non-fungible tokens uh, in the media recently. So you may have heard of projects like CryptoPunks, CryptoKitties, Board Ape Yacht Club. You may have even heard about the $69 million sale of a, a piece of art that was created by a digital artist named Beeple. You may have even heard pretty ridiculous things about people spending quite a lot of money on pictures of rocks. Now, based on just reading this, you may think that NFTs are simply a way to uh, buy or sell uh, digital images, but that isn't exactly the case. So we're going to talk about uh, exactly uh, what NFTs are and what, what they can be and how it relates to your business. But to understand what an NFT is, it's important to understand what fungibility is. So fungibility is essentially a asset's ability to be interchanged with other assets of a similar type. So uh, the ultimate example of fungibility could be done with money. So my $10 is valued the same as your $10, or my $10 is also worth two other $5 bills. You're able to interchange them for an equal price. In terms of non-fungibility, this is when you're looking at something that represents something unique in value. So even though there may be uh, millions of different printouts of the Mona Lisa, there's still only one originally painted Mona Lisa, which is held in a museum and which has um, probably worth a lot of money. So what blockchain has been able to do with non-fungible tokens is bring this property of non-fungibility onto the digital space. Just like with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, they're able to bring fungibility into the digital space. Um, so in that case, one Bitcoin is equal to uh, one other Bitcoin, for example. You can do the same thing, but now with non-fungible tokens. And so art is a really big example of non-fungibility. So there are, um, however, a lot of different use cases in which you can use something that is non-fungible in different contexts. So crypto art is one really big one, but you can also think of it as collectibles. Um, one industry which is looking into non-fungible tokens quite a bit is video games. So you can imagine um, just like you would buy digital assets for a video game, let's say like a new skin or a new sword, some sort of downloadable content. Um, you can imagine if that asset was a non-fungible token, let's say it's a golden sword. I have a golden sword that I've purchased. I can then use that asset in different video games that recognize this type of non-fungible token. So I can take one asset, purchase it, and use it in various different contexts rather than solely being able to use it on one platform or one game, which is not something that was really possible before. Um, you can also think of non-fungible tokens in the case of digital twins, so a, a digital representation of some unique asset that exists in the physical world, which is quite common and being used more and more in the luxury industry. You can also think about non-fungible tokens in, the, in certifications and registries for things like real estate. Um, but there's a lot more that it could be. What's important to understand here is that an NFT can be any unique digital representation of an asset with the added bonus that it creates a completely open design space. So what you do with it is solely determined by how well you can program a smart contract to do what you want for it. Um, and so if you look at the NFT industry at the moment, there are a lot of different marketplaces in which you can buy and sell NFTs. So the biggest one is OpenSea, which is very prominent for secondary sales. So if you own an NFT, let's say it's an ERC721, you can use it to sell it on platforms like OpenSea. Likewise, you have also things like Axie Infinity, which is in itself a blockchain-based video game. But what's interesting about this one is that the video game itself is a play to earn. So as you play the game, you can also earn money in terms of cryptocurrency. 
Uh, you also have things like NBA Top Shots, which is basically a platform that has a licensing deal with the NBA in which they can sell particular moments that happen in NBA history or trading cards of particular players and things like that. So the NFT uh, marketplaces and the NFT industry in general has been growing quite quickly um, in recent history. And a big reason why that is, is if we look under the hood, how it all works is that it's been able to proliferate because of the use of standards. So the most common standard or one of the first standards for NFTs is called ERC721. And essentially this is a framework for a type of smart contract for non-fungible tokens. Um, and it was also one of the first ones. This is particular to the Ethereum blockchain where most of the activity takes place. But so if we look at a smart contract, which is modeled like an ERC721, we'll see that inside of that smart contract, you have a function called token metadata. And so in that token metadata, you have a link to a separate file, which has all of the different properties of the NFT that you may be referring to. So inside of that metadata, let's say we have a, uh, a link of an image. So in this case, this is a bored ape, but also inside of that metadata, you'll have the properties that are describing what exactly you're looking at in that image. So we'll see that the background is blue. We know that he's wearing a red shirt and his eyes are sad. What's also um, interesting is that if you go to platforms like OpenSea, you can open up the properties and you can see how rare a particular uh, property is for maybe that set of NFTs. So in the case of Board Ape Yacht Club, there are about 10,000 different apes that you can purchase as a profile picture. Um, and in order to determine what the potential value of that could be is by one way, looking at the different properties that that particular image holds. Um, but so that's how non-fungible tokens have been able to prolif proliferate so much and why um, and how they work. But so I hope this explanation is helpful in terms of understanding what NFTs are and why they're useful. In the next video, we'll go into much more detail and depth as to how to use NFTs um, and how to interact with NFTs using the settlement platform and to show you just how simple it is thanks to all of the different um, frameworks and low code applications that you can um, interact with inside of the settlement platforms so that you don't even need to know how to program smart contracts. So I hope you'll stick around and watch that video as well.